All right, hey, it's Paul Salo from China Cash Buyers, and uh, today I'm giving you a little walkabout, showing you some good reasons why you might want to have a business online. Uh, having a business online allows me to travel the world and to go basically wherever I want. And today is very interesting, as you'll see soon. So we're here in Lumpini Park, and uh, if you look closely, you see that lizard down there? That is a man-eating lizard there. That is a monitored lizard. You can see another one there. Can you see that guy there? I don't want to get too close because I'm just standing here. Uh, this is in Lumpini Park. So there's quite a few of them. You can see this one here. Oh, there's a big fat one. Ooh, I didn't see him. There's one in the sun. Look at that big one there. Look at that massive one. Oh, he's huge. These, these things are scary. They can eat people. And they can, apparently they can swim to like uh, something like 300 feet or something. I was reading on the internet. I mean, amazing, right? And they can climb trees and travel like 30 miles an hour. So uh, they're, they, they eat well here in the park. So, you, you know, they don't eat people. But uh, I tell you, <laughs> these things are everywhere. And you can see one swimming right there. If you look closely, see him swimming there? See that there? Yes, I am in Bangkok. Uh, the embassy is kind of, if you look, let's see, this road here is wireless road. So it's basically just about 100 meters over that way. So it's, it's, it's very close to here. Uh, not far at all. And I, just, I just got there and did some paperwork. So now I'm just walking around. And I wanted to show, give you an idea of what it looks like in uh, some of these parks here in the morning. Here we can get a better view of this big lizard here. That's a, like I said, that's a monitor lizard. And uh, yes, I am. I'm a digital nomad. Uh, I have been a digital nomad. Uh, I'll give you a thing. I, I've worked overseas uh, for since 1989. So I've lived overseas in Asia uh, since Reagan was president. Uh, but I was I always had uh, old school businesses like real estate, headhunting. I had a manufacturing company, things like that. But I was always kind of in one place. And a couple of years ago, I had a real tragedy in my life where my business was basically taken away from me. And I had to rebuild myself at age 49. And it was a big deal. Uh, so I had, I, I decided, you know, I said, hey, what am I gonna do? And uh, oh, here's, a, here's an angle of that lizard. Oh my gosh, look at that. These guys are cruising everywhere around here. Uh, but I, I kind of had this decision to make, you know, I said, hey, what am I gonna do with my life? Am I gonna do the same business that I did before? Am I gonna keep doing the same thing? Am I gonna do something new? And I kind of realized at some stage of my life that money was not my main motivator. My main motivator is freedom, you know, and freedom to do what I want to do. And I guess it's not in the sense that I want to do something crazy. It's just the sense that there's important things to do in life. You know what I mean? I don't want to be locked in somewhere where I have to be there all the time. And then something ha comes up, like I had a good friend come into, into Bangkok this weekend. Uh, from t from Tokyo and he's a good friend uh, Dean Rogers and he was here and if I was working a regular job I wouldn't have been able to meet him but I was able to spend the weekend and it was actually my birthday weekend I just turned 51 uh, so you know I think I think having a digit being a digital nomad and, and working online has so many advantages uh, I, I think the main thing is it allows you to be yourself you know I don't have to be anybody else I don't have to wear any certain clothes anymore uh, I don't have to, you know, I buy the clothes I want to wear, basically. You know, I like this kind of, like, kind of golf shirts, you know. And that's what I wear. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to, you know, do anything that uh, someone else tells me to do. I'm coming down, I just, they just, uh, uh, the way to be a digital nomad is to pick, uh, here's some guys that are doing uh, Tai Chi down here. This is pretty neat. They're going to start doing it again. They're, they're quite good. They're doing uh, Chinese Tai Chi and uh, they have some really nice, they had some, uh, just, I was hoping to get it for you, but they were playing some really nice Chinese music just a minute ago. Um, the way to be a digital nomad is to choose wisely, you know, your goals in life and what you want to do. Uh, to be a digital nomad, you really have to, I, I think for me, it took about uh, maybe maybe almost six months or something to really understand one that I could be a digital nomad and two what I needed to do so what I what I had to do is I had to have a job or a, sorry I had to have a business 
that I could sell something online, okay? Because that's key, because if I'm selling things in stores, uh, then I have to be there, I have to stock the stores, I have to, uh, I have to use the, there's an office and things like that. So I've had a lot of offline businesses, uh, manufacturing and, uh, you know, even like, uh, you know, service businesses like headhunting and real estate, where you might not be in the office all the time because you go out and do sales calls, but you're still, you're in the office a lot, you know? And, and you know, I just had to pick something that, that allowed me to be, not be anywhere. And so what I chose and what I recommend, uh, I, because I understand it, I, I really love it, I recommend it is uh, to, to create an information product. So I guess in the old days, I'll just keep walking and talking here so I can see your messages. Uh, in the old days, you had uh, people um, that were authors, right? So they're writing a book, and essentially the authors, how you doing? Hey, hey, yeah. This is, it's, uh, this is every morning like this. This is the tropics, so what it's like to live in the tropics. It's, uh, they're, they're wearing, uh, this, is, uh, this is in Bangkok, so they're wearing yellow. So in, in Thailand, that's the national color, so especially associated with the king. So uh, a lot of people like to wear yellow, and uh, it's, uh, you know, there's the huge um, events where everybody's wearing yellow all the time, and uh, parades and things like that. You can see the flowers are just beautiful. And this is like every day. But today is nothing special. The only thing special is I woke up <laughs> because usually I don't get up so early, but I had an appointment at the U.S. Embassy, so I had to get up uh, in the morning. So this is right next to my place. My place is about, uh, let's see, maybe 300 meters that way, and then the U.S. Embassy is about 100 meters that way. So it's a nice uh, district uh, to live in. But uh, yeah, I chose a, an information product. So I created an information product, and that's how I allowed myself to be a digital nomad. So uh it's basically a video series so in the old days you had authors i think i guess i guess authors are the first they're the first digital nomads in a sense i mean they weren't digital but they're analog nomads um because they could write a book anywhere hemingway was writing his books wherever he was writing them right he went all over the world writing books so i guess i guess it's some way if you think if you want to think in in in, in terms that you know you can really associate with think of yourself as an author if you want to be a digital nomad and these days, obviously, books are getting less popular and YouTube is more popular. Uh, Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon, anything video related, uh, Vimeo, all these sites are YouTube, uh, you know, Facebook video. These, these, this is what people want to watch. This is how people want to study. You know, I think whenever I want to learn something, like this morning, I wanted to resize an MP3 and I got on YouTube instead of reading, right? So people like to, to watch videos these days. So. I would say think of yourself if you want to be an information product, if you want to be a digital nomad, think of yourself as a author, uh, but you're only you're doing it through uh, video and also uh, blog posts and social media. And if you think of yourself that way, that's a good way to start because it's not too complicated. It's not like oh my gosh, you know what is a digital nomad? I can't do that. It's impossible. No, you totally can do it. Uh, just like you could write a book, right? Anybody can write a book. Um, but the advantage of, uh, let's look around this way, the advantage of, sorry I missed any messages. Hey, how you doing? Let's see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I do it for the travel? Um, should I be an information product? I think, not necessarily. You know, I, I think, I like to travel and I like to see new things. And I like to visit new places, I like to eat new food. Um, and so I would say that probably I don't do it for the travel, but I do it more for a, not a negative. What I mean is, I don't want to be tied to one place. You know what I mean? It's like, I imagine it like my office is like a building, and if there's a fire in that building, I want to leave that building, right? Or if I think it's dangerous, you know? Uh, but if you have a job, you can't leave, right? You're stuck there. You know, if I think, if I, if I just think, hey, I, I don't want to be here, you know? or I don't feel comfortable, I want to go somewhere else, or I, I see something else happening, there's a big event in Australia or in, in Japan, I want to go, right? So it's it's not so much travel, it's it's not being stuck anywhere, you know? I think being stuck somewhere, just looking at the same people in the same, uh, exact same situation every day, I think it's not good for your brain, like myself. Yeah, I, like I said, I've been overseas since 89, so I've had a, I've had a lot of new experiences and I, I've, when I did an IQ test, it, it had gone up a lot since I was younger. And 
I think it has to do with new experiences, you know, seeing new things, you know. Hey, look at that, it's beautiful. They're, they're here and the, the, the plants just grow like crazy in Thailand. The food here is amazing. There's, I don't mean like just the cooking, I mean like the quality, the amount of, of uh, food that just pops up out of nowhere here. You know, it's just like, if you go to the river and you just, you just uh, throw a piece of bread in there, like a hundred fish come, cl come clamoring up to eat it. I took a video earlier of that. Um, let's see here. We have to agree to many, many small mines in one place. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't like to put people down. I don't know if people are small minded or big minded, but I, I, I want to find the best of the best people. You know what I mean? So they're not necessarily, they're not going to be in one place, right? Just like you're not going to find the best singer and the best cook in the world in one uh, you know meeting right just by chance right you're gonna have to travel around the world to meet these people so for me I like to I, li I like to meet the biggest thinkers the, the guys who are the, the guys and girls who are doing the latest things whatever is cool whatever is happening you know I, I I value that myself you know I think it's fun to do new things I like new technology um, I, I love the information product business because I learn so many things every day you know I always have to overcome some new barrier every single day I have some new thing I have to figure out I'm always on YouTube for some uh, you know learning some new thing and then I I master it and I feel good and that gives me new options and what happens is when you I, I this, this is my this is my opinion but if you keep learning every day what you have to do is a digital nomad you really have to um, because there's no one else to rely on it, it's so great you know uh, it's so great because you 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 um, when you add up all those little things, you know, say you learn something new every day, right? And then at the end of the year, you got 360 new skills, right? I mean, it, it's really amazing. Like it sounds, obviously it sounds so obvious, right? But when it's done in, in your life, it affects your life in ways that you just can't uh, imagine. You know, it's so great. You know, I, I think, uh, I think uh, so being a digital nomad to me is not, is not I'm gonna take a seat here, um, is not so much about just uh, traveling or money but it's about learning it's about finding the best people it's about you know every year I wake up and I have a whole new set of skills that I learned now they're not always fun I mean I have to learn stuff right so it's it can be challenging sometimes but uh, that's I think how you grow right just going to the gym you have to work out and you gotta, you gotta be sore for a few days right so when you're learning new skills you're gonna be there's gonna be that frustration level but I think I think you learn, the more you learn, the better you become at handling frustration. I, I don't find myself getting frustrated like I used to when I was learning something new. When I, when I used to learn new things, I would be like, it would really was hard in the beginning. I'd get really frustrated. Like, I wanted to break my computer. Like, I, that's how I felt. I really felt angry at my computer a lot when I first started being a digital nomad. I was just like, ah, you know, just like crushing it. And I was, it's interesting because I was hanging out with uh, some young guys who were helping me with a bunch of things and they were they were all IT specialists and uh, this is a this is a great story actually I'll, I'll end on this so I I had this um, young guy I was working with and I was trying to figure out how to do something and I couldn't figure it out so I uh, leaves are falling down here it's beautiful uh, so so I, I tried everything I could do to do it and then I said I can't do it so I handed it to him now usually when I hand him stuff I, I would just give it to him and he would do it and then that would be done, right? I wouldn't pay attention and it would be finished and I'd move on to the next thing. But this time I said, hey, I wonder how he's gonna solve this problem, right? I really wanna know, like, how does he handle this? Because I was feeling super frustrated, actually. And I said, I was thinking to myself, like, how does, because he always seems very cool, this young guy. And I thought, well, how does he handle, um, you know, this challenge? And I watched him, and here's some more Tai Chi down here. Uh, I watched him, uh, this is every morning in the park, by the way. Uh, I watched him uh, solve this problem, and what amazed me so much is he did the exact same, he went through the exact same steps I did. Uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have any magic, or there was no special, he didn't have any special skill that I didn't have. He just had, he went through the steps, he, you know, frustrating, he went step by step by step, but the difference with him and me is that he didn't get frustrated, and he finally solved the problem. And I realized, I was probably about 40, I think I was about 49 at the time. I realized that this kid who was in his 20s was much more mature than me on a computer. 
you know, dealing with IT, dealing with technology. And I felt really embarrassed for the moment. I, I thought, you know, this is, how can I be, how can I be like this? I mean, I'm so, you know, and I realized a lot of older people or people uh, in their 50s or 40s or 30s get frustrated with computers and younger people don't so much. So I started to study him and watch him. And I learned that, uh, I learned that I don't have to be frustrated. I, I really don't have to be. I, I try my best. You know, I try to, these days I'll click through, you know, I'll watch a YouTube video. First of all, I'll try myself to solve a problem, uh, you know, some kind of IT thing. And then I'll, uh, then I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, check a YouTube video. And sometimes YouTube video doesn't work. Uh, you know, so I'll take a break, get a cup of coffee, come back. Um, and I just don't get frustrated with computers anymore. It's really amazing. I, I don't know if you can imagine the difference, but it's, it's really great for me because that was the turning point for me, I think, when I started learning. Uh, I started learning fast because before I dreaded new things, like new technology. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't like, I, I don't know, you, you know what I mean? I wasn't like the worst case in the world, but definitely like, if I was a, had a challenge, I would kind of put it off to after lunch or whatever and then not, not do it. But I, I, this, this has given me enormous uh, satisfaction, actually, to be able to solve uh, IT problems without getting frustrated with IT, with a computer, with the... You know, one thing you have as a digital nomad is you often have, uh, you have a different uh, challenges with, uh, with, um, uh, challenges with uh, Wi-Fi. So you're in a new place, you know, you can't get any Wi-Fi. And you're, when you're a digital nomad, it's like, oh man, the Wi-Fi is no good, and you can't upload, and 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 you you know you just kind of solve the problem, and uh, and you move move along, and next thing you know, you look back a uh, year or two, and you're like, uh, man, my business has grown. So uh, being a digital digital nomad is much more than being a digital nomad. It is building your own business, and it's building your own business online. So that's the thing. It's not just about the travel. I, I definitely would say it's not about the travel. You're building your own business, and you're traveling, and you're learning new things, and you're improving your life, and you're overcoming challenges, and you're free, and you can have new food, and you meet new people, and you can choose who you want to be with because you don't have to just be with the guy who's sitting next to you in the in in your office. You know, you can go wherever you want, and you can meet whoever you want. So I have I have great friends all over the world. I'm going to go visit my friend in uh, Tokyo here pretty soon. Uh, i got a friend in Suzhou near Shanghai. I'm going to go visit him. His son is graduating from college. Uh, it just doesn't matter to me because I'll just rent a temporary place and uh, stay there with them and then move to the next place. You know, I'm not, I'm just, I'm staying, in, I, I always stay in temporary places because I, I don't have to be anywhere. So I don't want to sign a contract with anybody. I work out deals and uh, that works out good for me. What does that say? What does that say? Oh, I lost that question. Sorry. Could you ask that again? I lost that question. I couldn't see it in the light. It's a, it was too light, too bright here. Oh, could you ask that one more time? Let's see. Oh, darn. How do you look on you? If I can see anything in here. Oh, I can't see it. I am sorry. Either way, I missed your, I missed your question there. But thanks so much for watching. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And... Uh, head over to open up a Thai bank account. That's my next uh, thing. So, all right. Thank you for the love. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. You you guys too. Really good vibes all around. <laughs> Life is good, man. Life is good. There's no question. Man. All right. Signing off. Thanks for watching. Paul Salo, paulsalo.com, P-A-U-L-S-A-L-O. Uh, I'm kind of building the website right now, but you can have a look and see what you think. Uh, Thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.